so here we are with Rob. We're gonna do this uh, Q and answer video, or question and answer video, yeah. We don't need to abbreviate that, do I? I could just say Q and A. Q and A, yeah. We're gonna do the Q and A, so yeah. find out some stuff. So yeah, so we went through, um, you know, we posted a video a couple weeks ago saying we're gonna be doing a Q and A video since we've never done one. And uh, went through and kind of figured out what you guys wanna know about me. So uh, first question we got, since when are you wearing your hair like this? Um, well, it's a two part question. First part is, since when I wear my hair like this. So I started doing my hair as a rainbow um, in June for World's Strongest Man. So June is Pride Month um, with World's Strongest Man this past year being in the US, decided to go all in with the Pride rainbow hair. Um, and I've actually had a mohawk consistently since seventh grade. So a pretty long time with the mohawk. Um, the second part of the question is the tape around the weights in your gym so that it won't move during sets. No, uh, it's actually just an organizational tool that the gym owner used to make sure the X amount of plates stay with each rack. So each rack is color coordinated with each plate. Um, and it's just so plates go where they're supposed to be. So one rack doesn't end up with 245s, another one ends up with 15. So it's purely just for organizational. Uh, really great tip actually for those of you that own a gym. Um, it's helped our gym out a lot uh, and made things a lot easier. We did try to convince Mills to put uh, rainbow tape on one of the racks and he said no. Next question, does a more whippy bar make it easier to lift big? So this is actually different for everybody. Um, for me, it actually makes it a bit harder. So I tend to pull better on a stiff bar. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry so. people. Yes. It's uh, it all depends, you know, to pull the slack out of a out of a whippy deadlift bar and uh, you know, kind of get that tension at the bottom of the pole. Some people are really good at it. Others, it takes a little bit more time. Um, you know, that's kind of how it is for me. So that's one of the things I've really been practicing with, uh, especially with the Arnold coming up and the elephant bar. We all know there's a a bunch of whip on that bar. Next question, does Derek get into the gym often? So he still works full time as a sergeant in the police, uh, in you know the town that he's been a police officer in for you know years. Um, so him and I will try to get you know one or two workouts in a month if our schedules align that way. Uh, but a lot of our communication is just through text um, and phone calls, pretty much talking about the program each week and getting ready for uh, for everything coming up. You know, luckily he's super involved in my program, so I literally talk to him almost every day. But, you know, schedule-wise, we don't always get to train together. Um, but it is a lot of fun when we do get to train together. So next question. Um, I actually get asked this a lot, so happy to see it on here. What kind of straps do I use when I deadlift? So I use WOW straps. It's Y Hour Way Weightlifting. Um, find them on Facebook, find them on Instagram. They are the best straps on the market. You can use them for any type of deadlift, whether it's an axle deadlift, a regular bar, car deadlift, side handle, you name it. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Next one, not really a question, but it says, I can honestly say that Corey is my favorite strongman camera guy. Um, he's okay. I, I still think he's really, <laughs> really good. Really, really good people. He doesn't have, you know, a bias whatsoever. No. Uh, no, Corey is awesome. I'm super lucky to be able to work with him. He puts a lot of time and effort, as you can all see in the videos. Uh, so it's great to have him behind the magic, per se, uh, you know, to kind of get this thing up and rolling. Um, <clears throat> he's better than Romark. So, yep. next one is... <laughs> Love you, Romark. Uh, serious question. What's the proper way to breathe when doing deadlifts? So... Strap in, get ready for the deadlift. Take a really big breath before you essentially get set and into the bottom of the pull. Uh, for me, if I'm going for reps, I will hold my breath for the pull portion of the lift. And then when I'm at the top, I'll exhale quickly, inhale again, go down and do my next rep. So I'll always breathe at the top of the lift. Um, just making sure I'm keeping my intra abdominal pressure super high not getting lazy in my upper back or my core. Uh, and that just keeps me tight throughout the entire lift. So the next one we got is, my question is, what do you and Joey do for day jobs? So this is my day job. Uh, Strongman has become my full-time job. Prior to this, I was the director of sports medicine in the boarding school world, um, where, you know, I pretty much just took care of the, you know, athletic and orthopedic well-being of over 500 student athletes. Uh, Joey and I lived on campus at the school, so we lived in a dorm of 51 high school boys where we acted as their dorm parents and kind of just took care of them to make sure they weren't screwing up too bad. 
Um, and I loved that job. And, uh, you know, it was definitely a tough decision to make to leave that. Because it's pretty cushy. I just worked a lot. Because I had a good year in 2019, I had more opportunities to compete, more opportunities to travel. My sponsors um, kind of signed me to better deals, and I was able to make the transition of just doing Strongman full-time and being a professional athlete. And as for Joey, he is finishing up his master's degree in occupational therapy, and, uh, you know, so he'll be working towards his, he's going to be, you know, getting certified at that in early 2020, and he'll be, you know, working as an occupational therapist uh, once he gets certified. Question is, was strongman always what interested you or did you ever consider bodybuilding or wrestling or any other sport? Um, strongman has always been it for me. So when I was in high school, I played American football. I was also a cheerleader, um, did that for a few years, had a lot of fun with it. Um, but I found strongman when I was 17 and still in high school. And kind of once I competed, once I got the itch and never wanted to not do this sport. I did powerlifting for a few years, was decently successful, um, you know. But, you know, ultimately Strongman is what I love to do and absolutely, you know, have just dedicated my life to it for the past 10 years. And, uh, you know, it's been the best decision I've ever made, which has been great. So it's just been Strongman through and through. How hard is it to go into a competition having a height of 5 feet 11? Thanks. You say 5 feet 11. I appreciate that. I'm only 5'10", but I'll take the extra inch. How can we overcome these problems and exercises like Atlas Stone? So... You know, being short sucks in strongman. Um, and, you know, there's, I think the only reason I've been able to get to this level is because throughout my 10 years of competing, I've just studied and dissected every single event to make it work for somebody that's only 5'10 and weighs less than 300 pounds. Uh, so the biggest thing is getting really good at the events, seeing what other athletes are doing and adapting their technique to suit you. Yeah. So we're just, you know, in the middle of Thanksgiving dinner. Rob's cooking and we're gonna bother him. Perfect. Alright, Joey, what a rip. So Bob Beezer. Love the videos and your collabs with Martins are great. Do you have any future plans to do more collaborations with any other YouTube usuals? Parentheses, Brian, comma, Eddie, comma, Stoltmans, comma, Thor, etc. And parentheses. Thank you for that in-depth question, <laughs> Um I would love to do more collaborations with those guys. You know, it's it's tough being not close to them. Uh, we're all friends, but we all, you know, Thor's in Iceland, the Stoltmans are in Scotland, Eddie's in the UK, Brian is in Colorado, so it's always a little bit of a trip. Uh, I will be doing a collaboration with JF Carone. Uh, leading up to the Arnold, because he has one of the Louis Sear dumbbells. Uh, that's 275. So I'm going to be making a trip up there. Uh, we'll shoot some stuff with him. But uh, other than that, no, no plans as of yet to work with those guys. But definitely, if we have the chance, it'll happen. I struggle with nutrition. When you first started with Strength Sports, how did you encourage slash force yourself to hit your daily protein goals? It is infuriating when I have the mindset and programming in the gym and ruin it when I don't eat enough. Speaking. That was my life. Um, so, to be totally honest, nutrition was probably the weakest point of my career uh, up until last year. Um, and for me, what it came down to was I realized I was getting so close to achieving what I wanted to, uh, but there was also always one missing link, and that happened to be uh, my nutrition. You know, this past year, 2019, took the American Log Press record, won the Arnold Australia, just nearly missed out on the finals of Worlds. Um, and I'm finally seeing like the effect that how nutrition really played a big role in my performance. Um, so it took me nine years to really get it through my head. Hey Rob, who is your favorite current WWE superstar and what do you do to relax after a training day? Um, so for me, I guess I would have to play favoritism is uh, my favorite WWE superstar is Braun Strowman, Adam Scher, uh, who is a uh, previous, he's a pro strong man, won the Ar won, uh, Nationals, I believe in 2012 or 11? 2011. Um, and then got recruited by the WWE at the Arnold the following year in 2012. So um, Adam's a good friend of mine. Him and I stay in touch pretty regularly. So I would say he's my favorite. And then uh, to relax after a training day, um, I eat and sit on the couch. That's about it. My life is not terribly exciting outside the gym. I cook. Um, I play housewife during the day when Joey's at work, and that's about it. So you're saying you're a lot like this one right here. Yep. 
Hey, Glitter. How do you feel about the narrow image of masculinity, masculinity pervasive in strength sports and fitness? Is this something you want to address? I find you and Martins very refreshing in that regard. So I think this has to play along with like the whole like toxic masculinity and hyper masculinity of strength sports, and I think that's one of the reasons why I am so open with you know my sexuality with the Instagram name World Strongest Gay. Um, you know why I post things about Joey and I so often is just to kind of show people that from the outside looking in, yeah, you know, strong men in strength sports do look unbelievably hyper-masculine and intimidating to get into. Uh, but when you're actually in, you know, kind of the uh, the community, it's, it's you know, such a great group of guys and women that, uh, you know, really masculinity doesn't mean anything. You know, I think the guys in strong men are... I've been super welcoming to, uh, you know, to me and Joey, you know, as, you know, gay men in the sport, and uh, everybody's been super supportive. Ooh, we don't want to keep you from your food. I know, I have to get the stuffing going. Bag one. I'm making a lot. I haven't eaten yet today. I am very excited for this. Corey doesn't get any. <laughs> I do, too. I have to survive to make it to England, you know, if you want me to actually go there. So Absolutely. you have to feed me. That might be getting close to the run. Oh, I can't wait. Ooh. We need to be in between 160 and 170. Out there. You can do it, little turkey. Gobble, gobble. Gobble, gobble, and you're standing over here about ready to wobble, wobble. Give it about another half a right. Well, that wraps up our first Q&A video here with Rob. Hopefully, you got to know your favorite strongman just a little bit better. If your question didn't get answered here, perhaps it will in one of our future editions of Q&As with Rob. If this one goes over well. I guess we'll see. It's my first shot at it. Never done one before. Hopefully you guys liked it. But as always, like, comment, subscribe, get the bell on so that way you're notified as soon as these episodes come out like this one and you can be one of the first ones to like, comment, or subscribe on that video. Also wanted to take a moment to, to thank my Patreon people. Thank you very much, all eight of you, keeping me going, helping me you know, make my ends to the contest. Rob's taking me with him out to Santa Monica. I'm also going with him to Canada. I'm going with him to the Columbus Arnold as well. So everything that you guys do on this Patreon site, I take that money and it helps me get to those places so I can film those things for you guys so you can watch them. Because I know you want to see them and I want to get there and film them so you guys can see them. So the more people that go over to that Patreon page, the link is in the description below. Check it out if you haven't yet. I try to put up a little bit of extra behind the scenes footage, some extra pictures when I have time. But most of all, it just helps support me in the endeavor of traveling with Rob to give you guys the content that you're looking for. So if you enjoy it, go check it out. And in the meantime, thanks for watching guys. Gotta get back to working on the next Kearney Power video because we just filmed the other day and I haven't even checked that footage yet.